Thank you uh, very much, Hildegard, and um, it's a real pleasure to be on another panel with you since I feel we've had a little bit of a break since your uh, report was adopted, but we're, despite maybe political family differences, uh, have a very common agenda um, in terms of uh, European critical raw materials. And um, I feel slightly like a fish uh, from a different pond in your pond this afternoon. I am not uh, a geoscientist and, um, and I'm not uh, normally in the world of, um, of scientists in general. I come from the trade union movement. And, um, but I think what is really clear is that first comment which was made um, this afternoon of the absolute importance of building together the links between uh, different actors around this whole agenda um, to ensure that um, we are um, learning from each other, but also um, putting together a strong European strategy. And that's essentially what I would like to say after I've said the uh, most important thing, which I should have started off with, which is a very big happy birthday uh, to you as an organization. Um, and. Um, I was struck, um, I come from the northeast of England, um, and in the northeast of England, we were, um, there's a fight uh, in many parts of the UK about where the Industrial Revolution started um, in the 19th century, but we consider ourselves to be um, the start of the Industrial Revolution um, in the 19th century. In 1852, uh, the Mining Institute was created in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, which became a global institute around mining and, um, and uh, materials, um, and was, is now called the Common Room of the North. And in some ways, this is the Common Room of Europe in terms of uh, the, the legacy. And what we are witnessing and embarking on today is another industrial revolution, an industrial revolution which will transform all of our industries and we represent as industrial Europe workers from right across the manufacturing um, fabric of Europe from the he heavy energy intensive industries, the metal industries, chemicals, um, right through to um, advanced manufacturing, um, to the automotive, aerospace, defense sectors, ICT and so on. And in every single one of our industries, the twin transition, digital and green, is the key um, megatrend which is, which is influencing really not just the transformation of the industry but the transformation of work um, and, um, and the, the types of jobs that we're doing in Europe. And underpinning those transitions are these critical raw materials. And it's absolutely right, as um, Joanna and others have said, that the triple crisis that we are um, witnessing um, at the moment, uh, first the, um, the pandemic, then uh, the supply chain crises uh, that we saw afterwards, and now uh, the, uh, the multiple crises which come um, as a result of uh, the invasion of Ukraine um, and, and the, the social crisis, which is extremely deep um, in Europe at the moment, are dependent on us finding a common route out, which increases Europe's strategic autonomy and recognises that we have to invest more in the very foundations of our um, of our industry and the transformation of value chains in Europe. And part of those strategic dependencies, which there's been a lot to focus on, is around uh, raw materials and our dependence on other parts of the world in terms of raw materials. And therefore, uh, we as trade unions have actually been calling for a very long time for a comprehensive European raw material strategy as part of a, a pillar within a European industrial strategy. Um, around building up really uh, sustainable industries um, in Europe. But today, that challenge becomes all the more important. And we're talking about millions of jobs in Europe which depend on us getting it right and getting it right at speed. And that's why making the links between those who are working in the science community together with those in industry and the two sides of industry, workers and business, together with policy makers, is actually really extremely important. Within our um, raw materials policy that we've developed within industrial Europe, um, we 
um, nod to you all of the way through, calling for more resources to be put into research and development, calling for more researchers to be put, more uh, resources to be put into innovation. We need to recognise that while, yes, the circular economy is part of the answer and we represent those workers in the, um, in, in the circular part of uh, the materials uh, story, um, at the moment, we are far from having a real circular economy in terms of materials in Europe. And even if we do end up, and when hopefully we will end up recycling the materials which are already out in our economy, there is it's still an important role for primary extraction. And we have expertise in Europe and, um, and deposits in Europe that we believe should be um, safely, sustainably, uh, be uh, exploited as part of our strategic autonomy. So we have uh, set out um, the uh, the agenda from our side. Uh, we see it as as part of actually a narrative which is a narrative which can be presented to the wider society, which is about the just transition of the Green Deal. When the Green Deal was presented in um, 2019, at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, it was always presented as a green deal with towards uh, to implement the climate um, law and to arrive at climate neutrality by 2050, but with a just transition to leave no person or region behind. And for us, that just transition story is a crucial story to build the social acceptance for the raw materials story. Because the expertise we have in Europe, in mining regions, and in many cases in coal mining regions, which are undergoing an enormous transition, um, that expertise can be uh, captured and channeled towards uh, the, uh, the, the Green Deal objectives. So we are extremely engaged, and, and there I'll end because I think the idea is to have a discussion as well, but we're extremely engaged in every format that we can, in dialogue with employers, with Euromines, uh, with our other employer counterparts, to build up that just transition story within the raw materials agenda at European level, but also um, in contact with uh, politicians and, and policy makers in the, in the institutions. And what's really nice today is I feel like we're drawing a line between two of the dots that we haven't had up to now, which is the dialogue then with the science um, world uh, to ensure um, that your research really is, uh, I think it was a very good point uh, that you made in, in receiving your award, that that research is feeding straight into policy making and having advocates in organisations like the trade union movement, employers organisations and elsewhere um, at national and at European level is, is vital. For us, and last word, this is about cooperation. If we look at what's happening around the world, there is a global raw materials race going on. We see it. Um, we see our companies looking at where they're investing, comparing national policies and the investment climate. This is a question of European competitiveness in the long term. And, and therefore, um, it's vital that we move from merely just cooperation between European member states to far stronger coordination between European member states. And one of the core demands of our policy on the new European raw materials strategy when it came out at the, at the end of 2020 was that we should be working towards European frameworks and governance to ensure that the raw materials policy is bringing in um, that within a framework and we're open to dialogue with you what that looks like. We thought about a European raw materials agency which could bring in ge geological surveys and link up with, with others. Your experts in your field, we have views in ours, let's get this dialogue going because ultimately it's a question of avoiding that we lose the opportunities that we have and that we um, see uh, deindustrialization of Europe and an importation of the goods for the Green Deal, which we will need to transform our economies, rather than 
growing our own industries on the basis of what we have in Europe, the workforce that we have in Europe, the scientific expertise that we have in Europe, and um, hopefully creating a prosperity for all in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.